Welcome. In this video, we're going to be creating our very first window as part of a graphical user interface. To do this, we're actually going to type out all the commands in a command line so that you can see what the program is doing step by step. So you can either open up a command line in your operating system or open up IntelliJ and go down to the bottom to click on Terminal. We're going to open up the terminal and let's go ahead and open up JShell. So again, JShell is our interactive terminal, which allows us to execute Python commands without having to create a main class file. So now that we're in JShell, we're going to import the library that allows us to create graphical user interfaces. There's actually two libraries that are mainly used. We're going to be focusing on one called Java Swing. Java Swing is the default library inside of Java. So we're going to go import javax swing.jframe. Now notice the javax, the swing, they are not capitalized, but the j and the f for jframe are. So we've imported our library, and also notice that we haven't imported the entire swing library. We're importing just jframe. Jframe is going to allow us to create a pop-up window. So now that we've imported our jframe, or the ability to use it, we're going to create a new jframe and give it a title. So jframe is a class, and so we're going to say jframe. So we're using the jframe class. Let's give our new class instance a name. So I'm going to call it myframe. And myframe is going to be a new jframe. And the jframe is going to take a parameter or an argument, and we're going to call it howdy. So that's going to become the title of our little pop-up window or pop-up frame. Press Enter. Now notice, when I create the new frame, nothing's popping up, nothing's showing up at all. However, I get this really long kind of cryptic message talking about Java Swing JFrame frame, and then it's got all this other information. These are giving you some of the parameters, and it's showing you the state of the frame. So one of the states, if you notice, it's hidden. So we've created a frame, but you can't see the frame. Also, the zero by zero right here tells us how large our frame actually is. And right now, our frame, you couldn't even see it even if you wanted to, because the frame is zero pixels by zero pixels. It's so small, it's, it's not even going to show up on the screen. It's non-existent. So we need to set a size for our frame. So we created the frame. Now we're going to set the size. So let's take my frame, which was the instance, and we're going to go dot set size. And let's make the size of it 300 by 300. So my frame now has a size, but notice it's still not visible because we did not set that state. So we're going to go my frame dot set visible, and we're going to set that to true. So hopefully when I press enter, it will execute this command and pop up a little Java pop-up window. So notice I've got a little window here now, and it says howdy, and it doesn't do much of anything. Also, an interesting point to make when we did it this way, when I close this window, notice it doesn't execute, or doesn't kill or stop the program at all. Java has it set up to where the default behavior of a window is that when you click the X on the window, it just hides it again. So the program's still running, and we can actually just go my frame dot set visible true again. And it'll pop the window back up. This could be problematic later on, because sometimes you want somebody to hit the X button. You would almost expect, or they might want, the program to stop completely. Well, if I X out the program, it shouldn't be running in the background anymore. It should be done. So one of the things you can do, and this is not the best way, but it's a way, is we can go my frame dot set default close operation. 
And so it does exactly what you'd expect it to do, the default close operation. So when we hit that X button and we close out the frame, what is it going to do? And we're going to go javox.swing.jframe. OK, so now we've called up our library, our JFrame library. And we're going to tell the JFrame what to do. It's going to exit on close. So we press Enter. And now that's going to tell our window that when we, our little pop up window, our JFrame, when we hit the X button, it's killed or terminated that window. And notice it says restore definitions with slash reload. So let's enter. If I try to do my frame dot set visible true again, you'll notice it can't even find my frame because my frame no longer exists. It's been killed. It's exited completely out. So what you could do is you could go reload restore. And what that does is it recreates the JFrame for us. And we can kill it again. So that was a brief little introduction to how to create a pop-up window using Java Swings library. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to create a button and interact with a program.